Following the success of building this, Superbugs, I thought uh, I might uh, see how I'd go putting the basic ingredients into a, a bug's frame, uh, something like this. As you can see, a lot smaller and lighter. The only issue would be getting the uh, the motors on. So this I've succeeded in doing it with this red bugs. So this video is going to be the story of how I went about it and some of the hassles I found along the way. And just for comparison, you can see the motors between the two uh, the original Bugs motors versus these big red ones. So step one was to take the cover off and have a good look at the layout, current layout with the 30 amp EFCs and to take a note of the colour coding of the wires to give me a clue as to how to wire up the new motors and to change them over. So that's with one of the motors mounted, just with the wires on top and I'm using two bolts which I figure will be enough to hold it versus the four screws used in the original bugs. Okay so you can get rid of the light, you don't need the LED but the uh, plastic square bit that fits in here and screws in is actually a structural member that gives the arm a bit of rigidity so always put that back in. So I use my, one of my trusty Swiss Army knives to uh, make the holes bigger for the two bolts that go through compared to the uh, screws for the bugs and as I say, I think I get away with two. So they sort of clamp down onto the uh, the rings that don't quite fit inside, but hopefully that'll be uh, rigid enough. So that's the cover back on, and I've got the four motors in. You can see the wires on the outside. Um, they, they can't not bring the freedom through the arms, so I'll put them on the outside. Here I am at the beach, ready for a test run. Sadly, it rapidly became apparent that I've got unacceptable vibration. Um, I'd done a quick backyard test, so I was a bit disappointed. I didn't realise until I got home and looked at the footage just how bad it was. So, which was a pity, because there was some pretty interesting scenery. The other thing I noticed is just how well the thing climbs. There's a lot more power and it's great for getting up to altitude quickly. So I'm definitely going to be coming back to this place for a scenic run as soon as I figure out what's going wrong. So I bought the sheet of 3mm polypropylene for a couple of bucks and then I've just cut out uh, washers for mounting the motors just using two screws. Now use a Dremel or a grinding tool to grind away the uh, little bits that stick up inside the inside the port the place where you put the motor so that this fits and sits smoothly inside something like that and then I can screw it through now ideally I should use four screws but uh, I'm thinking with spring washers I'll get it tight I'll get it tight enough to uh, to be okay I've hacked this original bugs 3 mount about a bit you can see I've taken a chunk out there but you can see how they had cutouts to allow for the bits of plastic sticking up to locate it so that's what I've ground away replace it with my own custom because I needed uh, th the three mil thickness to allow the engines to sit up uh, clear of the edges of the well because the motors are uh, wider than the Bugs 3 motor so little things you learn as you go through this process it's not quite straightforward as you think it might be tested it with two S batteries but I haven't tested it with, with three um, so I'm just curious to see if it's heavier and uh, more power so I might get more, more vibration that's just the concern
much happier with the results this time. Um, this looks really smooth on the playback. Again, it's a pity because it was uh, good conditions despite uh, some concern about the weather. So another one that I'd like to go back to to, to catch. Uh, I may have enough footage here to work it up into a, a cinematic movie for we'll see. But the good thing is I seem to have uh, cracked it and just keep an eye on the tightness of the bolts and should be right. After running out of battery and crashing in the sand hills, I realised there's some work to do. So here's the equipment I needed. Fine paintbrush and a vacuum cleaner. Because the front two motors got quite a bit of sand and I didn't realise quite how much until I had to look at it afterwards. I thought it might need the paintbrush as well, but looking at that, it seems to have uh, done a good job just sucking everything out. So what I'll do, here's the uh, other one that I haven't had a go at yet. I can see the grains of sand in it, so I'll put the vacuum cleaner on it. I'm ready to remount the motors, the front motors. The back motors are fine, I've had a good look at them. They didn't really contact the sand, so they don't need any work. So here's this uh, three mil washer. That's just thick enough to make sure the mounter, the motor uh, doesn't get caught on the edges when it's mounted. When I didn't have it, um, I couldn't get a good tight fit. So having tightened up all the uh, bolts, uh, next thing to do is to put the legs on. So I've got I've cut off the bottom of the legs for the front ones so they don't get in the way of the camera. Um, and the the ones at the back can stay on. But the reason I put them back on is because they're uh, they've got a three-way lock. You can see those holes there. Three-way lock, so it, it's just something that tighten that strengthens the arm and reduces vibration. Same reason I put the covers for the LED lights on. Even though I haven't bothered with the LED lights, um, I'll still put this cover on. So, that's the step to reassembly. <laughs>